Since I was born, I never saw such misery. United States Calverman, retelling his time at Andersonville Prison Camp. Anderson Prison Camp was founded, like many, to hold soldiers. Not for a long period, but to just hold the troops uh, for prisoner changes. But it had turned into something worse. The camp was commanded by a Swiss immigrant named Henry Wirtz, who had recently moved to the United States before the beginning of the American Civil War. He decided to serve the Confederate States of America in a Louisiana regiment, and was wounded during the Battle of Seven Pines during the Peninsula Campaign in Virginia. He'd be given the rank of captain, and he would move from desk job to desk job until February of 1864. In February of 1864, the Confederate government established a railroad depot and prison camp called Camp Sumter in central West Georgia. It became known for the small town nearby named Andersonville. Now this started a dark period in the American Civil War. Camp Sumter, a.k.a. Andersonville, was never meant to be a permanent resident camp. It was simply a 15-foot stockade wall that was at the beginning 16 acres large, which would then turn to 26 acres of the large wooden fence. Now, I keep mentioning how Union prisoners were not supposed to be there long. So, throughout the war they had been doing prisoner exchanges between Union and Confederate forces. But in early and mid-1864, those exchanges stopped. General Ulysses S. Grant ordered his generals to seize the exchanges. He rightly said that all they were doing was continuing the war by giving the Confederates free reinforcements. So places like Andersonville, that were meant to be holding cells, pretty much began to get overfilled, which led to the extensions of the walls and camp. But another issue with Andersonville, the Confederates did not provide shelter. So what would happen is the Union soldiers would have to use their tents as permanent shelter. And in the Georgia winters was not the best thing to have. Wirtz would approve foraging parties, but they would never get enough wood to build actual shelters. Another issue was a group of prisoners known as the Raiders. The Raiders were simply men who wanted to take advantage of their scummy mentalities and began to abuse and rob from their fellow soldiers. Sometimes working with the Confederates, guards, they would actually live like kings, mainly by attacking new prisoners and stealing any goods they could find on them, at certain points, killing the men. Wirtz did not want to risk his small command to take down the raiders, But inside the prison, a group of prisoners formed an eternal police force called the Regulators, who would go on to overthrow the Raiders, and with Wirtz's support, punish the Raiders, executing six believed to be the leaders. Now, as bad as the Raiders were, the sanitary conditions were worse. A small creek went through Andersonville that was for the use of the prisoners for fresh water, a place to get uh, water and bathe. But that became pointless when Wirtz stationed his garrison's camp upriver from the prison. So the fresh water quickly began to taint by the guard's waste and the dirt from them bathing, forcing the prisoners to turn to rain as their only source of water. They would leave cups, bowls, and even their wool blouses out to collect the water then boil the water in an attempt to clean it. This caused many different diseases to break out throughout the camp, including diarrhea, dysentery, scurvy, and hospital gangrene. Those who tried to escape would be punished in the most severe way, either given the chain and ball, a device that you and your co-conspirators would be chained to a large metal ball and have to drag it throughout the camp, 
or the worst one, stocks, which Wirtz would leave prisoners in for days and sometimes a week or two, resulting in many men dying from strangulation. There was also something known as the deadline. Now, Andersonville's stockade, in all honesty, was a pile of sticks hashed together. If anyone wanted to, they could just all run into the corner and collapse that part of the wall with enough force. So the Confederates had to find a way to stop any chance of that happening. So they created what became known as the deadline. It was a small wooden fence that rested 19 feet from the main wall. If any Federal soldier would cross, without question, they would be shot. At one point, suicidal soldiers began to just cross the line, knowing fully well they would die. Another common action at Andersonville was the holding off of rations to prisoners. Wirtz believed that men would rat each other out for survival, so he would starve the entire population in hopes to enact desperation. The Confederate government would actually send inspectors to Andersonville, mainly because it was required that all prison camps were checked in on. The inspectors were horrified at what they saw. Men who were so starved you could see their ribs and organs. Every morning, fresh dead prisoners were piled up by prisoner prisoner burial detachments. The war in the camp browned from the pollution of the guard's camp. However, with fear of Sherman and his army discovering the camp, Wirtz was ordered to redistribute the prisoners to other camps. Andersonville had only been active for a year and two months. It had seen 45,000 prisoners come through its large gates. Of the 45,000, 13,000 men will die of starvation, murder, and dysentery. It is because of one Dorrance Atwater who had been picked to help record the dead, we would know these numbers. Now, he actually made two lists because he knew in the event of a Confederate defeat, Wirtz would destroy the evidence of what had happened at Andersonville. So he hid his own personal log that identified 13,000 Union soldiers having died under Wirtz's care. Federal forces would take Andersonville, May of 1865. The footprints of the prison camp were still visible, and the soldiers had now seen what their comrades suffered through. Wirtz had actually been arrested, and he would be the only person charged with war crimes during the American Civil War. Now, there is a debate if he was fully responsible. Now, of course, after the war... He was the primary target as the commandant of the camp. But there's a point people make that Andersonville was not supposed to be a permanent prison. It was supposed to be a holding cell that turned into a permanent prison because of Grant's orders. And the reason the rations were so low was because of Sherman's total war policy throughout Georgia, which had robbed the region of food. But Wirtz was medically trained, and it did not excuse actions like the stock, ball and chain, or the contaminated creek that killed so many. So he was hung in Washington, D.C., at the same prison and scaffold as the Lincoln conspirators. Andersonville, of all the atrocities of the American Civil War, is the one that is most sickening. The fact that men looked on and laughed as they watched their fellow men starve and die. Today, Andersonville is a National Historic Site, where part of the stockade is still standing, and you can see examples of the camps. It was also, the tale was also survived by the 1996 TNT movie, Andersonville, which showed the true horrors of Andersonville through the eyes of the men of a Massachusetts regiment captured at Cold Harbor. Thanks for watching, friends. I'd like to jump back to the American Civil War again after our little break. If you're a new viewer, I would love to invite you to subscribe. And to all my returning viewers, please like, share, and comment. And we'll see you in the next one. As we entered the place, a spectacle met our eyes that almost froze 
our blood with horror, and made our hearts fail within us. Before us were forms that had once been active and erect, stalwart men, now nothing but mere walking skeletons, covered with filth and vermin. Many of our men, in the heat and intensity of their feelings, exclaimed with earnest, Can this be hell? God protect us. And all thought that he alone could bring them out alive from so terrible a place. In the center of the hole was a swamp, occupying about three or four acres of narrowed limits, and a part of the marshy place had been used by prisoners as a sink. An excrement covered the ground, the scent arising from which was suffocating. The ground allotted to our ninety was near the edge of the plague spot, and how we were to live through the warm summer weather in the midst of such fearful surroundings was more than we cared to think of just then.